Welcome to Whiskey One, the channel for the novice, the curious, and the connoisseur. I'm Whiskey One. Today, we're going to be trying the 2021 Old Elk Infinity Blend. So stick around. All right, folks. So I'm very excited to try this. Uh, this will be the first time that I ever get to try the Infinity Blend. This is a couple years old, so it's an older release, but I have seen these come out on an annual basis. Um, now we'll get into the whole like story behind it, but one thing I wanna just point out is not only am I excited to try it uh, for the first time, I'm excited that Eric let us have this bottle without first getting into it himself. So this is a fresh unboxing as well as a fresh uncorking. So let's try this sucker out. Get a nice, nice presentation here. Um, you know, not over the top as far as uh, presentation cases go, but you know, certainly, certainly nice. Where I think it's really going to shine is the um, the juice inside the bottle. I have a I have a feeling that this is going to be something a little fun to try. Again, you guys that you know have been into whiskey for even just a, a few months or even a year probably have thought about doing an infinity bottle. You basically take different whiskeys, bourbons, rye, and blend them. You know, your favorites usually get blended together in your own little decan um, uh, decanter, sorry. And you know, you give it a try and over time, who knows, you might come across a gem that you came up with yourself. And that's kind of the idea behind this bottling is that, you know, Greg Metz, who's the master blender, uh, the man behind the brand, um, who usually, who used to work for MGP, uh, decided to come up with a blend. And this is in particular, a 60% blend of Old Elk straight bourbon whiskey, aged six years, 24% Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, aged for 12 years. So we got, we got some old juice in this bottle. And then lastly, 16% Kentucky straight bourbon that's been aged for 11 years. Now, they don't really go into the deets on what Kentucky straight bourbon they got their hands on. Uh, but if any of you whiskey nerds out there happen to know those kind of deets, you let me know. I would love to see that. Drop it in the comments. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Now, before I get into pouring, I do have a Glen hat. Glen Karen cover here, whiskey one. Glen Cairns, uh, Glen Cairn hats or Glen hats. What the hell you call these things? Glen hats. Keep it simple, right? We have some left in gold. Uh, if you guys are considering subscribing or you do support us and we haven't sent you any of these yet, definitely hit me up, message me, and let me know that you're interested because these are freebies. I do have them in a couple of different colors. Got some gold left, like I said, some turquoise. I have in black. Uh, I'll show that off here in a sec. Check that out. We got the, uh, the black with the turquoise and gold logo there. And then we do have, I believe, a copper. Got a metallic copper and also a metallic turquoise with the metallic copper logo there. So hit us up. Let, me, let us know that you're interested and we'll send those out to you free of charge. Okay. So let's get into the whiskey, uh, starting with the nose. All right, folks. Nice color too. Um, not overly dark, just a nice caramel color to it. A little red. <sighs> now, this is quintessential old elk we have here. Um, you know, when it comes to old elk, uh, one thing you should know is they tend to make their old elk blends, particularly their bourbons, uh, with a high, high malt. Uh, that's some, that's one of their like signatures, if you will, that like separates them from the rest of the pack. And I, I think it's kind of interesting that they use a higher malt in their mash bills, uh, than say other bourbon makers that are out there. Uh, but that is sort of their little call sign is to be a little high on the malt side. Um, but of course, this being bourbon, you know, your primary ingredient for those of you that may not know 
is mostly corn in the mash bill. But uh, because they do have a blend of that 12 and that 11 year bourbon, I'm pretty sure that um, you're gonna have like some really high variants and whether it's a high, high rye malt, or I'm sorry, high rye bourbon that's in those 11 to 12 years. But you know, I wish we knew a little bit more to it. But on the nose, what I will say is that uh, true to form, uh, you get a lot more nuttiness, a little bit more leather, and a lot more oak on the nose. <sighs> a nice dusting of like cocoa, like Nesquik cocoa powder. But you know, you do get your caramels, you get your vanillas, you know, you kind of expect that from a bourbon. But I like what's happening here, you know, for an infinity blend, um, sometimes it could be anything, you know, anything could be thrown at you, um, you know, and this is a premium bottle. Uh, so it's not on the cheap side, it's not gonna be your bottom shelf, whiskey by no stretch there. I think overall, it's just a nice, almost delicate nose. There's not a lot going on, but it's pleasant. You know, it's it's got like a creaminess to it, a nuttiness that kind of stands out, and that's sort of the pervasive, you know, note that I get on on the nose. So let's give this one a try, folks. Cheers. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. This has got like a sweet, a sweet praline taste. There's a, a subtle chocolate taste that's coming out. It's not, it's, it's also subtle in the fruity side. It's more like a apple, pear, delicate orchard fruit that you get but it's not the first thing that comes out. What comes out initially is a good deal of like a creaminess, a vanilla, uh, a parfait, um, a nougat. It's chocolatey, it feels um, feels like, uh, like a praline, honestly. You know, a little bit of nuttiness, a little bit of chocolate note there. Uh, it's not overly sweet. Uh, and that was just the initial sip, so let's give this one another, another go around. Hmm. Wow. You know, for being higher on the on the proof side, it drinks really easy. It drinks well below its proof. You know, it feels like closer to 50 than it does closer to 60% uh, alcohol. Um, wow, yeah. I mean, it's got a good lingering finish a good amount of cinnamon you get uh like a nice so it does have a like a twinge a little slight slight touch of that rye rye spice but uh, I, I certainly think it's more like dusty oak leathery nutty than i i think it's it's spicy but certainly on the finish wow it kind of hangs on to that palate i'm really like surprised by this um wow okay i'm gonna take one more sip and then let you know who I, I think this speaks to. Cheers again. Hmm. Hmm. You know, yeah, the fruitiness kind of jumps out a little bit more on those return sips. A lot more pear, a lot more apple pie. You know, you get that baking crust, that, that nice crisp golden crust taste. Um, a little bit of baguette, French baguette. Um, but again, it's it feels more like like you're entering a barn or something like that, where a lot of hay's jumping out, feels dusty, feels a little woody. Uh, but I, I certainly like it. I like what they did. It, there's nothing like that is competing with one another, right? It's a nice blend. It's a nice uh, marriage, if, if you will, of different bourbons. And I think this hits the mark for me. Um, I want to make a quick comment um, before I wrap up. You might notice a little bit of new surroundings. So if you guys are new to the channel, you probably haven't noticed much yet, uh, but you will 
start to see the channel evolve into more of a podcast environment, more of a podcast feel where we have guests from you know around the world uh, that are able to tune into us. They'll be featured on the TV here. I'll have different guests that um, attend the show. In the past, we've had plenty that attend. You know, you know, do a little tasting with us, do some reviews with us down at the uh, bar, and where you see a lot more whiskey. And you're probably wondering, well, what happened to all that whiskey? Have no fear, <laughs> I still have it. Uh, but we decided to turn one of our rooms into more of a dedicated studio space uh, just to be a little bit more conducive on the sound quality. Uh, trying to record podcasts in the bar was not sound conducive, so we decided to kind of change things up. So you'll start to see this evolve a little bit. Uh, those of you guys watching, if you have any ideas or suggestions that could make our background or the overall feel of the podcast pop, hit us up let me know i would love to hear your thoughts and i know some of you guys are return sippers and you regularly tune into the show my hat's off to you i really appreciate all the love and the support that you show us so especially you guys that are patreons um, i really appreciate you guys continuous to support us and helping the channel to grow um, so if you guys are interested in becoming a Patreon, I'll leave uh, information here within the video so that you guys can check out our tiers and let me know if you want to join. Uh, Whiskey fam, uh, overall, I would have to say that this is a dram for the whiskey connoisseur. 100%. Um, there's something to be said about Old Elk. I feel that Old Elk is different from the pack. There is just something about the namesake Old Elk. It makes you feel like you're in a log cabin, you've been out hunting, and now you're just gonna kick your feet up, you know, rest those dogs after a nice long hunt, and enjoy the moment after your kill, and uh, sip a little good old time whiskey. And that's kind of what this feels like. This feels like a grandfather's whiskey. Uh, an older gentleman's whiskey. Now, you guys may have also noticed that um, I've been letting the, uh, the chops grow. I've been letting the, the beard get a little long, okay? Uh, I decided to take No Shave November to a whole new level, and this is probably the longest my beard has ever grown, and <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, should I continue to grow this sucker out? Do, is it time for a shave? Do you, do you want the old me to come back? Uh, nice clean cut or what? Let me know. Drop a comment. I would love to hear your feedback on that. Uh, my wife personally wants to see this continue to get longer. I, I don't know what the draw is, uh, but you know, a little salt and pepper does, does, does the ladies, does the ladies good. All right. So enough of that. <laughs> one lady, one lady and all, only one. The love of my life. All right. So now to wrap things up, folks, thank you all for joining us and sharing your time with us. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you decided to stick around and hang out with us. And here at Whiskey One, it's about the one you enjoy. Cheers. <laughs>